Hi, my name's Tom, and I'm here to talk to you about MyGBiff, a tool for accessing wildlife information at your fingertips. So my background is I'm both an ecologist and a programmer. So day to day I work with information about wildlife, data about wildlife, and use programming to extract as much information from it as I can. So when I look around, I see data everywhere through portals like GBIF. There's a lot of data out there, but most of the people just walk around completely unaware of all this information. They're unaware of the data that we have about the world around them. And I find this data really fascinating. So I wanted to try and design a way that people could get access to this information as easily as possible. So we could build a website or whatever else you might want to call it. But I don't think this is really appropriate for the people that I'm interested in. So I'm particularly interested in younger people who are perhaps particularly disconnected from the wildlife around them. So I decided that a web website wasn't really for me. And there's good reason for that. First of all, there are five ways of computing. Way back we had mainframe computers, then came workstations, microcomputers, and PCs. And websites are really designed for PCs. But the wave that we're in now is the mobile wave. So most people, especially those in the younger generations, use mobiles, uh, use mobile internet and mobile apps for accessing information about their world. So to put that into numbers, if we take 16 to 24 year olds, 12% of them don't have a smartphone, but a much larger percent, 40%, don't have a computer. So it really makes sense that if we want to connect with these people, we want to be connecting with them on their mobile device. So I could develop an app. Well, there's two good reasons why I didn't do this. The first is <laughs> I, don't, I don't know how to develop an app. But the second is I feel like that's the first step that everyone goes to. They either build a website or they build an app. And I just feel like we could do with thinking outside the box a little bit. So what do I mean by thinking outside the box? Well, for starters, we don't want to reinvent the wheel. There have been loads of really great um, mobile apps developed for wildlife. So for example, there's I Recall Butterflies. This has uh, 1,000 to, uh, 1, to 5,000 downloads on the uh, Android store. Or that Bird Track, that's got 10 to 50,000. That's, that's a really impressive number of downloads. Or even more than that, Project Noah, a great project involving young people especially. Uh, getting them excited about wildlife around them. But I think we need to think even higher. How about an app that has 100 million to half a billion downloads? You know, now we're really talking. So the app that I decided to go, to go and build on was Twitter. Now if you think about it, Twitter really makes sense. It's used a lot by young people. About 37% of young people are using Twitter. Not only that, but Twitter also comes with location information. And I can use this location information to tell people about wildlife where they are. So how does it get, how's it going to work? So MyGBIF works like this. It's all built around this hashtag, hashtag MyGBIF. All you have to do as a user of Twitter is to put that in your tweet. When you do that, I can use your location information that's embedded in your tweet to ask GBIF for information about occurrence records where you are. And that's done by creating a five kilometer radius polygon around your location and sending that to GBIF APIs. So that's great. So now I have tons of wildlife information about where you are right now. The problem is GBIF gives me Latin names. So then I have to lean on the Encyclopedia of Life using its APIs. So I send the Latin names over to the Encyclopedia of Life and I get back common names. I can also get the IUCN's threat status uh, of each species. So that's some really cool information there too. Now to display some of this information, I'm going to need maps too. So I again go to another API, this time Google, and I pull in their maps. So now I've got all this data together in one place. So from this information, what can I do? Well, I can tell them about who's recording. I can tell them what they've been recording. I can tell them where they've been recording it in their area. And most importantly, I think I can put their record in context with records from around the world, to see how their area compares to other areas. So that's what it does. Let's see it in action. 
So the process is really simple. What I do is I pair up my smartphone and I open my Twitter app and then I start a new tweet. I'm going to type in a tweet, it can be whatever you want as long as it contains the hashtag MyGBiff. You'll also see that the little blue location icon's on, so I've got my location information is going to be sent with this tweet. So I've sent that off, it's got the hashtag MyGBiff in it, and all I have to do is set down and wait. Now this takes about a minute, um, and I've just sped it up here a little bit. In a minute's time I get a response back from an account called uh, Nature Near Me. So I go to my notifications, and at the top here, I've got the uh, reply from Nature Near Me. It tells me I've got a personalized nature report, and it gives me a link to GBIF there too. And attached to it is this image. Now, I'm just going to go back into the presentation so you can see this a bit more clearly. At the top of the image that's returned with the tweet is an, this nice big heading. We've got the username of the user who sent in the request, hashtag MyGBIF and the date, and the latitude and longitude. This means if they save it, they'll have it in perpetuity. They know when they did it, who it was who did it, and where they were. Next thing we do is we take all that GBIF sightings data and we rank the top 10 species on this histogram. So we've got the most common species at the top and the least common of the top 10 at the bottom with a number of sightings along the x-axis there. What we've also done is we've gone away and we've got the common names for all these species. This means that anyone can, uh, can understand it. We're not getting bogged down in Latin names. Next we get some two natural language statements. Natural language statements are quite nice. They read really well. So there have been 109 species recorded in this area in the past 10 years. That's nice to know. And then we get the context. So this ranks 256 out of 1,887 searches. So this is how my search has ranked against all other searches that have been done using hashtag MyGBIF. I also find out that my species in my area come from 56 different families. So that's quite a diverse range of recording that's going on in my area. Then I get the map. So this is pulling in stuff from Google for the mapping. And then we've got a kernel density plot. So we're just plotting the density of the records in this area uh, using this sort of heat map. Uh, and that's done in the programming language R. What we see here is actually quite interesting. There's a real hotspot right in the center here. This is actually uh, centered right on the biological record center, which is the organization where I work. And we specialize in uh, managing species occurrence data. Then we get a few more, uh, two more natural language statements. So GBIF has found 374 records within five kilometers of where you stand. This means 32% of searches have fewer records than you. So again, some cool information and some context, putting you in context with all the other searches that have been done. And we find out that 28 recorders have been submitting records in this area. This one I really like. So now we can use the IUCN threat criteria of all the species that were found, and we can put them into this nice pie chart. So we get to see, of the species that are around us, where I am right now, how many of them fall into each threat category. So here I find out, well, most of the species here are doing OK. So 96% of them fall into this least concerned uh, category. And then, of course, the all-important GBIF logo. So that's what hashtag MyGBIF does right now. But that's only the start. We can also do some other cool stuff. So I've got some work in progress here. This one get, pulls in map data. So all the user has to do is specify their species of interest. Uh, they've given the English name here, European Eagle Owl, followed it with hashtag map, and then the account has tweeted them back with a link to an interactive map for that species. We can get even cooler than that. This one here, we specify the species name here, blue tit, and hashtag directions. Now the process goes away and uses the Google API to get street direction from my location to the closest record of that species. So here you see on the right, when you click on the link on the left, you go to the right, and on your phone, I'm getting directions straight away. I can hit navigate and follow the directions walking to the closest record of that species. So I think this is pretty cool. I hope you do too. This is my GBIF. One hashtag, infinite possibilities.